in the building it's been it's been good i mean obviously i mean everyone's frustrated you know and everyone's uh, you know disappointed um but um yesterday we met as a team uh to move past the game reviewed the game uh and then you know started work on on uconn um and there's a bounce back spirit in the building so um, you know, we had an honest assessment of what happened Saturday of the places where we can get better, both in coaching the game and in playing the game. And uh, we moved on from it. And, you know, the belief in what we can do and um, the, uh, you know, the energy and enthusiasm towards, you know, what this program is capable of hasn't hasn't waned at all. Is, uh, you know, what when do you, you expect Ray Davis to be able to be back? Like, do you think he would be back for for spring practice potentially? Potentially spring practice. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a long-term, you know, um, recovery. So we'll, we'll target spring and kind of see how his rehab goes, uh, through the, uh, through the winter. All right. You guys have had, you know, some kind of inconsistent quarterback play throughout the season. And, you know, I see that Ken Seals is still, you know, listed as a starter on the depth chart, but what do you think he needs to improve on? And, you know, the quarterbacks, as a whole have to improve on going. Well, Kenny has, I think the word you used, Daria, inconsistent quarterback play. I mean, I think there, there, there's a stretch run there uh, against Colorado State uh, into the Stanford game where he's playing well, playing with confidence, distributing the ball, um, you know, taking the reads that are there. Um, and if we can, if we can get him to, you know, to, to replicate that consistently. Um, I mean, Ken, Ken can win games for us, you know, I mean, we believe in Kenny and, and I'm excited for him to do that. Um, you know, with Mike, I think Mike's, you know, um, such a talented player. Um, you know, the, the one thing I, I need for Mike to do is just um, at times, I feel like when he's out there, he presses to make every play and, you know, part of the quarterback position is strengthening the other 10 positions on the field. And that means, um, you know, you're sitting in and making a throw or taking the access throw when it's there or handing the ball off when the when the when the box dictates that I should hand it off. And so for Mike to just settle in a little bit and allow the plays to come to him in a game, I think will uh, will help him uh, grow in that position as well. But, you know, th those both those players are still young. I mean, it's it's um, I, I don't want to lose patience with the fact that they're growing not to mention the fact that it is a new system and a new scheme and, and they're learning, you know, um, to, to play within the system, um, you know, as the season goes. So uh, if Kenny can, can be a little more consistent, if we can replicate those positive performances, the positive stretches we've seen, um, you know, and then if Mike can, can be the counter punch, so we know he can be, but also understand that he doesn't have to do it all on his own when he's out there. I think, you know, he's got to run the offense effectively and strengthen the other 10 positions on the field and, I expect those guys to come out and have a great week of practice and, and play well on Saturday. Do you think there's anything specific that Ken needs to do to improve that consistency? Ken's hard on himself. He's a competitor and I think he, I think, um, you know, that can lead to just him tightening up at times. Like when he played against Stanford and again, that stretch in Colorado State, he was loose. And um, when he goes out there and plays loose and he trusts his abilities, which he has ability, he's a smart player. Um, you know, I think when he's tense, sometimes just the place play speeds up for him a little bit. And I thought that happened to him on Saturday. You know, the first uh, quick game we throw, uh, he's throwing off his back foot and there's no, there's no rush there. And I just think he was speeding up his process uh, when, when the throw and the catch were there for him just to, just to take a normal delivery. So, Again, those are um, those are things we can absolutely work on, and and we have full faith and confidence in Kenny. And you know, when he goes out there and plays with that confidence, and plays with the support of everyone in the program, and relaxes and just and just allows his talent to come to the surface, he he's been effective for us. Chris Lee, hey Clark, how would you have? evaluate the coaching aspect of offense at this point in the season from play calling and philosophy and maybe going forward, what are the things that you might like to see change? Yeah. You know, um, obviously I felt like, um, 
again in the in the that Colorado State to the first half of the Stanford that stretch, I felt like we um, in coaching the game showed um, our capability. You know, we we were able to find one on one shots against Colorado State. Um, you know, we 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 called our way into those and. Um, and I thought that allowed for some strength and receiver play with uh, Will Shepard and Chris Pierce. I thought, um, you know, um, in the Stanford game, the design with with motions and um, different different nuances to kind of separate their front level from the second level allowed us to get the run game going. Um, and, you know, those are positive things to build off of. Um, you know, I, Look, we have to strengthen our, our protection in the offensive line. I know Coach Blazik's working hard on that. That's been a priority for us. Um, I thought in the Georgia game, you know, we got on our heels. And I thought we got on our heels both in terms of our play, but also our play calling. And, um, you know, we have to fight that so that we can get some vertical stretch going in our offense. And, um, you know, that's been a point of focus for us as a staff, just in terms of you know, as we as we grow together as a staff and grow into understanding our personnel and who, where our strengths lie, you know, we can't we can't uh, allow the situation to to push us back on our heels and and um, and make us conservative. The answer for us isn't going to be just hand inside zone off, you know, and win. It's it's got to be uh, more creative than that. And um, there has to be an element in our game where we're willing to go up top with the ball and you know where we need to work in in the um, execution of that is throwing catchable balls and stacking receivers down the field and that there's a lot of technical fundamental work that we're putting in to to be better in those ways um i feel like you know our play calling needs to unlock that explosive potential and um you know again i think it's it's a process of growth and learning i think there's also the circumstances of saturday that 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 just got us a little tight and we can't allow that to happen because our confidence as coaches bleeds into the confidence of the players too. And, um, and so, um, you know, we got work to do on both sides of it, but uh, that's why we're here. And what I do know, Chris, is we have smart, capable people that, um, that aren't hiding from, you know, um, the development and growth that needs to happen. That, that's what's most important to me is that we're able to talk about these things honestly, address them and um and work to change and that's what we're doing uh as we as we set our plan for this weekend robbie uh hey clark at this point is ben bresnahan pretty much full go uh i certainly imagine he would play this weekend but where is he at in terms of you know 100 percent or trying to be close to that he's recovered from from his injury so he's 100 percent that way obviously there are there are like nicks and bruises that come up um, you know, over the course of a game that, you know, he was able to play in on Saturday, uh, but he'll be back at it uh, this afternoon for practice and expect them to be um, fully available to us on Saturday. Aria? Um, you know, you guys have had some struggles in on special teams in terms of both the kick coverage and then kick returns, punt returns. Um, so, you know, what do you think, you know, needs to be fixed in, in that situation and how to kind of improve, um, you know, in those aspects of the special? Yeah, we didn't get a chance to show much improvement in our kick coverage Saturday, obviously, because we only got one opportunity, but that was a point of emphasis last week. It'll be a point of emphasis again this week. We're excited to get Pearson back too as the kickoff specialist, which will help that unit as well. Um, in terms of the punt coverage, you know, I think it's the, the balance between, um, you know, letting Harry, you know, bang it out for distance, um, knowing that he needs to have hang time as well, because, um, you know, when you just kick the, the long ball, you know, you're, you're, you're stressing the coverage out. Um, you know, Saturday we used the rugby kicks to kind of balance that and to keep the return off balance. Um, and I thought that was effective. And so, We'll continue to explore that those options, the the variation to make sure that he's really effective when he does hit the long one. Um, and then it's also personnel driven, right? It's it's giving opportunities to young players to get out there and um, you know coverage units are about speed and a willingness to hit and tackle. And um, you know we we um, you know we're continuing to 
to move down the roster to find the guys um, that are that are you know willing to do that at a high level. And I think one guy that stands out, Arrington Truesdale, you know, um, on all our special teams units has really stood out as as someone who is competitive. He's tough. Um, you know, he's he's shown play speed. And um, and you know, we want to we want to give a chance to guys like CJ Taylor, who has really made an impression to us on our on our scout unit. Um, I mean, they're, they're, it's, it's about finding the formula, finding the coverage players that have the coverage attitude. So again, going back to that kickoff after the 98 yard touchdown against Stanford, that um, you, you have a unit that's taking the field with an attitude, with speed and a willingness to hit and tackle. Um, and, and um, you know, then you know, obviously the, the coverage structure being in place, you're gonna have success. As far as the return units go, um, you know, specifically with the kickoff return, um, you know, obviously we, we, we've experimented with, with, um, with Ziegler back there um, and, you know, ha unfortunately had the turnover um, in the Georgia game. Um, yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to, um, you know, he, he's a young player that's going to, that's going to have some learning curve, but he, he's a talented kid that we think can do it. I want to, I want to make sure we continue to give him opportunities um, you know, what, what Georgia did with their kickoff was, um, where they had been kicking it out of the end zone, you know, um, and, and a returnable ball, um, was usually one that was kicked in the middle and a little short, um, where we wanted to take a chance to, to break one. Um, you know, I thought they did a great job of coming out and kicking for hang time. And so the kicker hung the ball up in the air. Um, we fielded it, you know, out of the end zone. Or right on the goal line at times and the coverage unit was inside the 25 um and that's too much pressure i mean that's they're they're, they're you know it's too effective for the coverage then to be able to collapse your blocking schemes and, and take the space away from the returner so the decision was made to fair catch and give our offense the best chance at room to start drives the um you know, the mishap in the second half where where Cam calls for the fair catch and uh, doesn't field the kick is is. Is uh, inexcusable. I mean, that's a veteran player that, that knows the situation, knows what the situation calls for. And he's got to he's got to execute just like um, just like every other position on the field. And that was, um, you know, that that was just an unfortunate uh, mishap from a veteran player that that um, that really set us back in a, in a game where, again, we were we were already fighting from from our heels on defense. And um, so, you know, better, better decision making at those positions, obviously, ball security. Anytime you're in a return unit, you're looking for the, the um, possession of the ball first. So we can't have the turnover on the, the kickoff return early, um, making smart decisions. Um, with respect to the fair catches and then and then fielding the ball, you know, those are things that are fundamental um, that, um, you know, those are things also that have been taught. I mean, Coach Lustig's done a nice job with that. Uh, and so we have to we have to um, we have to execute those things on the field. Chris Lee, you have another. Yeah, Clark, what what's your philosophy in terms of a coaching staff's job with motivation? Obviously, kids that are there that are on scholarship with the opportunity to play SEC football, that should be enough right there. But kids can be kids, and sometimes maybe they need a, a kick or whatever. What is, what's your top-down philosophy in terms of, of what a coaching staff maybe should and shouldn't do, what the responsibilities are and are not um, in terms of motivation? Well, um, look, at the end of the day, you know, a coach is absolutely responsible for the motivation of the players. And that starts with me. And um, I think, um, you know, um, our meetings and practices are spirited and we speak honestly about what's expected. And, and um, I think particularly here in year one, where we're battling through, you know, kind of um, an inherited psychology here, that's, that's really been as big of a challenge as anything, you know, I mean, um, you know, we, we have to, we have to learn how to compete and win, and that is a process. And so, um, you know, um, from Monday to Friday and even Saturday prior to the game, you know, we spirit our team as coaches. We, um, we are, um, yeah, I think in a, in a perfect world, Chris, 
um, you know, we're not responsible for starting the players engines. Like, you know, that's where we have to get that player ownership, but we're not there yet. And so um, it was us before the game as coaches, um, you know, um, you know, being the raw, raw spirit and energy. I think on the sidelines, it's about um, it's sometimes managing the emotions. So like, you know, um, how do you inspire the, the next right thing done the right way? It's, it's about uh, certainly open, honest communication, but also, um, you know, counterbalancing the mo motion of playing the game. Um, but like, listen, I, you know, um, there's, we have to be intense. We have to be direct and we are. And I mean, I think any one player or coach that's been around our program understands that, you know, we don't take uh, motivation for granted, especially in year one. Um, you know, that's, that's a, that means that, you know, this is extremely personal and emotional to me. And that means that. Um, our players know exactly um, how I feel and how I what I expect of them, um, and um, you know we we exercise that every single day. So I don't know if that answers your question, Chris. It, to me, it's um, you know we are absolutely responsible for inspiring a team, for motivating a team. Um, that motivation happens every single day, um, and from our team meeting to our practice to our play on the field. This is also about the replication of. So like, um, you know, I don't believe in an un unhealthy motivation where, you know, we're just, uh, we don't like yell and scream and cuss at our players to get them to do one thing one time. You know, we want to win the hearts and minds of our team. Um, and again, we do that by being direct and honest and spirited. Um, we, we absolutely confront, um, you know, effort that is substandard. Um, and, uh, you know, we, um, you know, on game day, we, 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 we certainly will interject, uh, whenever we need to. And I think the further we grow as a program, the further we grow as a team, you know, it's less about the pregame speech and it's more about the default, the process, um, until we get to that point, then it's my responsibility to, to come up with the best pregame speech I can. And, uh, again, you know, that's what I've been doing and I'll continue to do until, um, we're mature enough to, to handle the, the, the competitive and spirited energy within the team. The best programs in the country, um, you know, it, it, a, coach, a coach is there to coach and teach and instruct. A coach is there to help manage um, the emotional state in the game. Um, and um, the players are just excited to be out there and competing. And, and uh, we have to get to that point. But until we're there, you know, we're building that spirit and energy through our discourse day in and day out. And again, that starts with me that trickles down to the coaching staff. Those are things that we meet on as a staff all the time. Um, and, um, you know, uh, hopefully as we go and we continue to grow the spirit of this program, it's manifested in our play on the field. Quick follow up with that, if you don't mind, I appreciate your answer there. That, that mostly answered my question. Um, I, I've been to your practices and I've, I've seen spirited practices and things like that. And sometimes games has been a little different. Is that just a case of, when the past pops up with a, a group of kids who aren't used to winning, just the, the situation drags them down in the moment. I don't want to put words in your mouth. Yeah, but, uh, that's the part that's that's hard to understand because I, I see it in practice, but sometimes in games it doesn't it doesn't translate. No, I agree, and I think this is the you know as far as the the challenges that I'm facing down each day and and where I'm most frustrated and where I want to see. Um, our performance shift is in, again, the spirit of the team um, on the sideline. But even before that, I mean, I, to me, it's like, um, you know, what, what is our spirit just on Saturdays as we as we go through the star walk? Where, where are we at in our energy systems and warm up? Um, and um, and then certainly as we battle it out, you know, um, how are we handling adversity and how are we you know, how are we rallying our energy um, and um, in, in, in an effort to, to uh, defeat the opponent? You know, Colorado State's the example of the game where we, where we um, were able to do that. And I think that, you know, there was, a, there was a tangible feeling on that sideline that was different. Um, but consistency is the, is the mark of anything that's good. And, and when we're inconsistent in our effort, our energy and our spirit and our enthusiasm, then we're leaving 
um, we're leaving the results of the game in the hands of the opponents. You know, how are they going to show up? And so um, to answer your question with respect to default to the past and um, you know, I certainly feel like there's a psychology here that we're battling through, right? And um, you know, particularly with players that have been embedded in our program, that you know, um, where they haven't experienced success yet, sometimes, and I've said this in the past, that there's an element of ego protection that goes up or a guardedness that you you don't actually fully want to uh, uh, expose yourself totally to the competitive experience because somehow you're holding back a little bit um, because it's painful. And I mean, it is painful. Um, when you go at something really hard and you fall short, it hurts. Um, but yet the only way to personal greatness, the only way to team greatness is to be willing to fully expose yourself as a competitor, not even every single Saturday, but every single day, whether it's in the weight room and meeting rooms or on the practice field. And so um, these are the throws of building something new, building something that's different, building it in a place that is um, somehow like, you know, harbored this, this mentality in the past where, you know, we can't overcome things when it, when it gets hard, you know, we, we, uh, we, we, we shell up, we guard up. Um, and, um, you know, Chris, I think from January through winter workouts to spring practice to summer, we've made such leaps and bounds and we have gotten better. And then we introduced the scoreboard in the fall and we're battling through what it means to, um, to fight for something regardless of what the score tells us. Ultimately, Saturday was a challenge because that game got out of hand quickly because we weren't playing complimentary football and we turned the ball over, gave them short fields and weren't able to hold up defensively. Um, if there's a silver lining, there's a defense that, that made decisions to go out and play at 35 nothing in the second quarter with spirit, energy, and enthusiasm. There's another goal line stand in there. There's, um, and, and, you know, I spent a lot of time with those guys on the sideline Saturday uh, because I knew they needed me and, and um, to, to be able to, to see them, um, you know, rally, pursue the ball with better effort um, and, um, and, you know, um, play with spirit. Even when the game was out of hand, I think the lesson there is that, you um, you know, football is fun and football played with energy and, and with your brothers is a, an incredible experience. And um, the scoreboard can be the scoreboard, but what we do between the lines, snap in, snap out, is what defines us as competitors. And, um, you know, we, we are searching for that identity here. We are searching for that through uh, a team that is that is learning to to um, to overcome what has been a, a, a traumatized past. Um, and I am efforting that uh, every day um, so that we can get past, you know, this trauma and, and focus on what this team is capable of. And, you know, um, that is where uh, a large portion of my energy is spent right now. Chris Harris, last one. Sure. Hey, Clark, you may have semi-answered what I was going to ask. I was just going to kind of point to how does a loss like last weekend against Georgia make it more challenging to eradicate that inherited psychology, as you call it, especially in this conference? Well, it just it's just a matter of, you know, the choices, right? Do, you, do, you, do we want to be defeated or do we want to find a way through it? And I think, um, you know, what I, what I saw on film from Saturday were certain individuals that were playing at a high competitive level and in a, in a, in a game, in a losing effort and, in um, you know, a game that really um, just was so frustrating and discouraging um, in general, you know, you find individuals and individual play that gives you some energy and spark moving forward. And you, and you recognize that. Um, and I think as we get the program and the team to a point where, we're having um, a success that we know we can have. It's going to be about um, highlighting team and unit performance, um, you know, a togetherness that, that um, again, puts us in the best position to win. But um, what we do is we take those guys that were on Saturday, um, you know, competing with all uh, their spirit and energy and, um, and putting up a great fight and winning one-on-ones. Um, and we, and we put those guys in position to do it again. And maybe that's a young player here and there that's getting an opportunity. Um, you know, we had uh, Quincy Skinner, um, in late in the fourth quarter and a, in a stock block away from a run play 
um, bury the the DB into the ground. Like that to me is a, a sign of a guy who is playing at a competitive level, independent of what the circumstances tell him. Um, you know, we got to continue to give guys like that opportunities to um, to define the identity of this program. And that's kind of what where we're where we are. And I think Saturday, rather than be um, you know, defeated coming out of Saturday. It's like, hey, this is this is where our program is. This is how we measured against Georgia on Saturday. Now let's let's figure out how we can evolve through this. Who are the guys that allow us to evolve through it? And um, and and let's let's make it a galvanizing experience so that we can again put our best effort on display Saturday against UConn. All right, Chris here. Quick, Chris, uh, quick follow up, Chris. Yeah, just qu quickly. Clark, you mentioned guys who popped as people who played through adversity and, and executed the way you wanted. You mentioned Quincy Skinner. Can you just give us a couple more people who caught your eye in that, please? Of course. I, I mentioned Arrington Truesdell earlier. Um, he was a guy on, on our return units and coverage units that played with attitude. Uh, Tyler Steen, I thought, um, showed up physically uh, winning one-on-ones, finishing blocks, um, you know, um, I thought uh, Ben Cox was a guy that that uh, had some flashes, um, as did Julian uh, um, inside there at center. And then defensively, um, you know, I saw Brendan Harris flash late in the game and start to close windows down and play physically. You know, Max Worship was a guy that was playing hard and finishing on the perimeter. We have to clean up our tackling. You know, I think there was early in the game in particular, we were – you know, swinging and missing too, too often. Uh, but um, I think as we tighten the eyes down the, in our secondary and we're able to not react so much to the ball, but to the, to the blocks and to our keys, we're going to see a higher um, tackling success rate because um, we're going to close space earlier. Jalen Mahoney is another one that stands out. And he's a guy that um, to me has been, you know, one of the heartbeats of that unit um, pretty consistently since the first game. And so, um, you know, um, th there, there was there was a number of guys that flashed on defense, and I thought there were things there. Um, you know, the two inside backers, Anthony and Ethan Barr, played a ton of snaps um, and just competed. You know, it's 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 a Wusu making the TFL that sets up the third and long. Alex Williams pressures it, a ball gets deflected. Ethan Barr is pursuing the ball, and we get a turnover. Right? That 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 is what Vanderbilt football is, and we have to replicate that. Over and over again to get the results that um, that we desire, but um, they're out there for us. And so we just we take Saturday. We we learn from it. Certainly, it hurt. It was frustrating. It was painful, uh, personally painful um, to each of us. We we grow from it. We evolve through it. We understand it's representative of where we are. Um, and now we flush it and we move on to UConn. We got to be better as coaches. I've got to be better as the head coach and. Our players have to be ready to put forth their best effort this week to have a chance to celebrate in our locker room. And um, UConn is is going to put forth a challenge. They played their best football here last weekend, and and um, you know they're going to come in with the confidence of a team that's ready to win a a, a game on the road. And so we have to we're going to have to play our best and um, and 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 battle all the things that have shown up to hold us back. Complimentary football, the psychology of adversity. All that stuff is going to come up on Saturday, and we're going to have to be um, we're going to have to be better uh, from from our first four games.